Shalom YouTube, Shalom Believers, welcome back to Sister Kate Shofar Mountain. I'm going to be talking about another one of the topics that you all picked for me, and these topics have been fantastic. The one on how to handle friends and relatives who thought uh, SHTF was crazy it has over 5,000 views. It's a very popular topic, and I thank you for suggesting it, and uh, you guys are wonderful. These, these are just awesome topics. So the next one we're going to handle is how to transit from modern life to honoring the Lord. That's another awesome, awesome uh, topic to talk about. So let's get into that. The very beginning of living a life honoring the Lord starts with believing in God and Jesus. And part of that, the hugest part of that, besides understanding who they are and accepting who they are, is reading the Bible because the Bible is the original document from the 66 Dead Sea Scrolls. It is the original document that talks about who God is and who Jesus is in relation to God. Because the whole religion is founded on the belief that Yahweh is God and believing that story in the Bible about him. <clears throat> And if you are one of those people who've had other people tell you, like pastors or your relatives, that the Bible is not true and it was written by different men and blah, 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 just go to Google and type in archaeology support Bible or Bible archaeology and you will find multiple, like thousands, if not more than, um, texts, pictures, books, photographs of archaeology that supports what happened in the Bible, including the walls of Jericho, uh, Jericho, including altars that people in the Bible built. They are still in the places described in the Bible that those things were built. Uh, there's artifacts, there's um, bits of inscriptions that talk about David, that talk about uh, Roman people. Uh, leaders who were mentioned at the time. So that whole thing about the Bible's not historical, it's fantastical or whatever, is bunk. It's just plain bunk. So once you get into the Word, you cannot just read part of it and then make your decision on your belief. You need to read the whole thing and you need to read it from the beginning to the end. Because the New Testament is not a different book. It's not like the Bible has... Um, a soldier's instruction manual in the front and then a housewife's instruction manual in the back. It's one story about one God and the people who follow him all the way through, including the Messiah he sends for those people. Because yes, eventually the whole system of belief was opened up to the Gentiles, to the others who, who are people like us. Um, but for the longest time, for the beginning time, that belief was held pretty much by Abraham and his offspring and then people who came in contact with them. Uh, the, the exodus out of Egypt with the Israelites, strangers and sojourners came with them. So, and uh, there is a story about, well, I'm trying to remember his name now, the queen of Sheba's eunuch who handled her treasury, I think, runs into a believer in the desert. I think it might have been Stephen, but one of you will remember this story because you know me. Um, anyway, this eunuch is reading scrolls from Isaiah, and he comes across this believer and says, Hey, I believe this Jesus is who he is, or this Yahweh is who he says he is. I want to be baptized. Then the believer's like, okay, sure, there's a puddle over there. Let's go do it so that he gets baptized. And that eunuch takes his faith back to where the Queen of Sheba is, which is in Africa somewhere. And there are churches in Africa who say they came off of that eunuch. When he came back and spread it, that church started then. So that's historical. Um, anyway, you need this... To understand these stories, you need to uh, understand what Yahweh is wanting for his people in that timeline and to be set apart, which is what the word holy means. It doesn't mean to have a halo over your head. Holy means to be set apart 
and what his people were being set apart from and why Yeshua coming has significance to what happened in the beginning. The sacrificial lamb is not something that just gets made up for the Gospels. A sacrificial lamb is from way back in the beginning. He is fulfilling, he is bringing to truth, to fullness, everything that is set up in the beginning of the word. And that's not to abolish his father's laws. His father's laws are what identify the people who follow him. So if you consider yourself someone who believes God is God, then his laws are part of that belief system. So his son didn't come to abolish them. His son came because the people of his time had gotten so far away from his father's laws. They had been drawn aside by the teachings of the elders and the teachings of the rabbis and people like the Sadducees and the Pharisees. And all of that had come out of the captivities that those people had been taken in and the effects, the influence on those on the Israelites in those captivities. So yes, there were to be elders of the Israelites and they were to judge people and instruct people. Uh, that was established back in Moses' time, but they were to instruct them by the God's laws and to judge for them using his laws as their guidelines. And so when the, fat, the Ser Sadducees and the Pharisees and the elders begin teaching other things are more important than God's laws, then Jesus comes back to instruct them to go back to his father's laws. And it's very, very plain in John, I think it's 1510, when he talks about, I keep my father's commandments, keep, you keep my commandments. It's very, very obvious he's not trying to get everyone back to following the elders' teachings. He's trying to get them back to following God's teachings because they've strayed. And that's what the Israelites had done in the beginning of the Bible was stray all the time. They were constantly getting pulled aside by other cultures, um, other belief systems as they came in contact with people. And so the, uh, the father would send a prophet to tell the leadership of the Israelites, hey, get back in line, and if you don't, you're getting punished. And then if the people didn't get back in line and kept frolicking and, you know, believing in pagan gods and worshiping them and offering their children to those gods and stuff, then the father would send some kind of punishment, usually a captivity or some kind of war that wiped out a whole bunch of them. It's multiple times in there. So you need to read the book and you need to read it all the way through and to understand what's going on in there. And then you can go to different websites for more teachings on these things. Um, 119 Ministry has some really good teachings. Pastor Joe's uh, sermons are up at shofarmountain.com. And that will bring some, some uh, instruction and light into your learning. Um, there are a few other websites. I can't think of them off the top of my head. But um, New to Torah has a few good basic uh, concepts and then uh, 119 and then Pastor Joe um, will give you sort of a overview you know get basics then get deeper then get deeper and then once you have enough knowledge you can read Bible commentaries um, online there are people like uh, Schofield and Matthew Henry now they're Christians they won't have the Torah perspective but they still cover in some of their commentaries some interesting facts that you having Torah would be able to then take in and, and know the significance of. So when you accept the Father and Jesus into your life, and when you start reading the Bible, if you pray and ask the Father, you will be convicted in his ways. You will begin to want to eat food that the Father says is food, and things like pork and um, shellfish, bottom feeders, and so on. You're going to be convicted to stop eating those things and you're going to be convicted to start pleasing the father more and more not pleasing a certain pastor not pleasing any family member or any community member but the father first um, and you will make changes in your life you absolutely will and things of the world will lose their interest for you and you will be more satisfied and more peacefully living when you walk with the father so i hope that answered your question I hope that uh, makes sense to you and that if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. All right. Thank you for watching. Bless you. Shalom.